was mainly because President Rouhani individually, within Tehran, within the Iranian power structure, has prioritized improving relations with Azerbaijan over Armenia. Yet, his visit yesterday was a direct reaction to the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's visit to Azerbaijan, which let's not overreact. He spent less than seven hours in Baku, and in many ways, it was his refueling on his way to Kazakhstan. But it brought Rouhani to Armenia. <laughs> now, the problem over the outlook of Armenian-Iranian relations is the real challenge or test is not in Yerevan or Tehran. It's in Moscow. It's to what degree Russia allows Armenia to deepen relations with Iran. And from a Russian perspective, it's natural. Russia does not want Armenia to become less dependent on Russian gas. And in many ways, Russia was a loser from the nuclear deal with Iran, just as the Israelis were the loser. Now, part of our policy advice to the Armenian government has been don't focus only on energy and transport. These are the two most obvious sectors of deepening of relations, but they're the least likely. They are most likely to be opposed by Russia. Our advice is to focus on niche eco economic capabilities. For example, motorcycles, laptops, high-end consumer goods, a number of profitable products that have been denied Iran under tightening of the sanctions. The other benefit is geopolitical or structural, strategic. Armenia is the only stable neighbor of Iran, period. It has Iraq, it has Afghanistan. Armenia is the only way in and way out. Armenia can be a bridge for Iran to overcome isolation, to enter the Eurasian Economic Union beyond the very small Armenian market, but it's also a platform into Iran for European and Western companies that are not yet fully confident to establish a presence in Iran to come to Armenia. A highly educated Armenian workforce, okay. very cheap, very low labor costs, and with this Armenian government, preferential tax treatment. That's why two European automotive companies, Renault and Fiat, are already looking at Sunik Mars to open a subsidiary automotive factory using Armenian labor to access the northern Iranian automotive market. Or airplane parts is the other big area. Armenia is the only stable country, and its workforce is both cheap and good, coupled with tax preferential treatment. So if the Armenian government, which when it decides what it wants to do with Iran, it hasn't yet, there are specific opportunities. The other important thing is the implications. A re-engagement or the return of Iran offers Armenia tremendous potential beyond economics. Right now, the region is driven by a competition between Russia and Turkey. It's changing into a triad where Iran will become the third player for us to play off. And whether it's in terms of Iran's concern over the April fighting, Iran is also a vested actor in what happens to the Armenian-held territories around Nagorno-Karabakh. And given the Israeli presence in Azerbaijan, as well as territorial disputes, ethnic Azeri issues, we do have a natural ally in Iran 